Welcome to our channel, History of Everything. Today we speak about history of Armenia. Armenia lies in the highlands surrounding the mountains of Ararat. There is evidence of an early civilization in Armenia in the Bronze Age and earlier, dating to about 4000 BC. Archaeological surveys in 2010 and 2011 at the Areni-1 cave complex have resulted in the discovery of the world's earliest known leather shoe, skirt, and wine-producing facility. According to the story of Haik, the legendary founder of Armenia, around 2107 BC Haik fought against Belus, the Babylonian god of war, at Kavastep along the Engel River to establish the very first Armenian state. Historically, this event coincides with the destruction of Akkad by the Gudian dynasty of Sumer in 2115 BC, a time when Haik may have left with the more than 300 members of his household, as told in the legend, and also during the beginning of when a Mesopotamian Dark Age was occurring due to the fall of the Akkadian Empire in 2154 BC which may have acted as a backdrop for the events in the legend making him leave Mesopotamia. Several Bronze Age cultures and states flourished in the area of Greater Armenia, including the Trioleti Vanadzer culture, Hayasa Azi, and Mitanni, located in southwestern historical Armenia, all of which are believed to have had Indo-European populations. The Neri Confederation and its successor, Urartu, successively established their sovereignty over the Armenian highlands. Each of the aforementioned nations and confederacies participated in the ethnogenesis of the Armenians. A large cuneiform lapidary inscription found in Yerevan established that the modern capital of Armenia was founded in the summer of 782 BC by King Argishti I. Yerevan is one of the world's oldest continuously inhabited cities. During the late 6th century BC, the first geographical entity that was called Armenia by neighboring populations was established under the Orontid dynasty within the Achaemenid Empire, as part of the latter's territories. The kingdom became fully sovereign from the sphere of influence of the Seleucid Empire in 190 BC under King Artaxias I and begun the rule of the Artaxiad dynasty. Armenia reached its height between 95 and 66 BC under Tigranes the Great, becoming the most powerful kingdom of its time east of the Roman Republic. In the next centuries, Armenia was in the Persian Empire's sphere of influence during the reign of Tiridates I, the founder of the Arsacid dynasty of Armenia, which itself was a branch of the Parthian Empire. Throughout its history, the Kingdom of Armenia enjoyed both periods of independence and periods of autonomy subject to contemporary empires. Its strategic location between two continents has subjected it to invasions by many peoples, including Assyria under Ashurbanipal, at around 669 to 627 BC, the boundaries of Assyria reached as far as Armenia and the Caucasus Mountains Medes, Achaemenid Empire, Greeks, Parthians, Romans, Sasanian Empire, Byzantine Empire, Arabs, Seljuk Empire, Mongols, Ottoman Empire, the successive Safavid, Afsharid, and Qajar dynasties of Iran, and the Russians. Religion in ancient Armenia was historically related to a set of beliefs that, in Persia, led to the emergence of Zoroastrianism. It particularly focused on the worship of Mithra and also included a pantheon of gods such as Aramaz, Bahan, Anahit, and Astjik. The country used the solar Armenian calendar, which consisted of 12 months. Christianity spread into the country as early as AD 40. Tiridates III of Armenia, 238-314, made Christianity the state religion in 301, partly, in defiance of the Sasanian Empire, it seems, becoming the first officially Christian state, ten years before the Roman Empire granted Christianity an official toleration. Under Galerius, and 36 years before Constantine the Great was baptized. Prior to this, during the latter part of the Parthian period, Armenia was a predominantly Zoroastrian country. After the fall of the Kingdom of Armenia in 428, most of Armenia was incorporated as a Marspanate within the Sasanian Empire. Following the Battle of Avarayr in 451, Christian Armenians maintained their religion and Armenia gained autonomy. The Sassanid Empire was conquered by the Rashidun Caliphate in the mid-7th century, reuniting Armenian lands previously taken by the Byzantine Empire, and Armenia subsequently emerged as Armenia, an autonomous principality under the Umayyad Caliphate. The principality was ruled by the Prince of Armenia, and recognized by the Caliph and the Byzantine Emperor. It was part of the administrative division Emirate Armenia created by the Arabs, which also included parts of Georgia and Caucasian Albania, and had its center in the Armenian city, Devin. Armenia lasted until 884, when it regained its independence from the weakened Abbasid Caliphate under Ashad I of Armenia. The Remergent Armenian Kingdom was ruled by the Bagratuni dynasty and lasted until 1045. In time, 
Several areas of the Bagratid Armenia separated as independent kingdoms and principalities such as the Kingdom of Vasparakan ruled by the House of Artsruni in the south, Kingdom of Sunik in the east, or Kingdom of Artsakh on the territory of modern Nagorno-Karabakh, while still recognizing the supremacy of the Bagratid kings. In 1045, the Byzantine Empire conquered Bagratid Armenia. Soon, the other Armenian states fell under Byzantine control as well. The Byzantine rule was short-lived, as in 1071 the Seljuk Empire defeated the Byzantines and conquered Armenia at the Battle of Manzikert, establishing the Seljuk Empire. To escape death or servitude at the hands of those who had assassinated his relative, Gagak II of Armenia, King of Ani, an Armenian named Ruben I, Prince of Armenia, went with some of his countrymen into the gorges of the Taurus Mountains and then into Tarsus of Cilicia. The Byzantine governor of the palace gave them shelter where the Armenian Kingdom of Cilicia was eventually established on 6 January 1198 under Leo I, King of Armenia, a descendant of Prince Reuben. Cilicia was a strong ally of the European Crusaders, and saw itself as a bastion of Christendom in the east. Cilicia's significance in Armenian history and statehood is also attested by the transfer of the seat of the Catholicos of the Armenian Apostolic Church, the spiritual leader of the Armenian people, to the region. The Seljuk Empire soon started to collapse. In the early 12th century, Armenian princes of the Zakarid family drove out the Seljuk Turks and established a semi-independent principality in northern and eastern Armenia known as Zakarid Armenia, which lasted under the patronage of the Georgian Kingdom. The Orbelian dynasty shared control with the Zikarids in various parts of the country, especially in Sunak and Bayat Zor, while the House of Hassan Jalalian controlled provinces of Artsakh and Yudik as the Kingdom of Artsakh. During the 1230s, the Mongol Empire conquered Zikarid Armenia and then the remainder of Armenia. The Mongolian invasions were soon followed by those of other Central Asian tribes, such as the Karakoyunlu, Timurid dynasty and Ag Kwayunlu, which continued from the 13th century until the 15th century. After incessant invasions, each bringing destruction to the country, with time Armenia became weakened. In the 16th century, the Ottoman Empire and the Safavid dynasty of Iran divided Armenia. From the early 16th century, both Western Armenia and Eastern Armenia fell to the Safavid Empire. Owing to the century-long Turco-Iranian geopolitical rivalry that would last in Western Asia, significant parts of the region were frequently fought over between the two rivaling empires during the Ottoman-Persian Wars. From the mid-16th century with the Peace of Amasya, and decisively from the first half of the 17th century with the Treaty of Zuhab until the first half of the 19th century, 80 Eastern Armenia was ruled by the successive Safavid, Afsharid and Qajar empires, while Western Armenia remained under Ottoman rule. From 1604, Abbas I of Iran implemented a, scorched earth, policy in the region to protect his northwestern frontier against any invading Ottoman forces, a policy that involved a forced resettlement of masses of Armenians outside of their homelands. In the 1813 Treaty of Gulistan and the 1828 Treaty of Turkmenche, following the Russo-Persian War 1804-13, and the Russo-Persian War 1826-28 respectively, the Qajar dynasty of Iran was forced to irrevocably cede eastern Armenia, consisting of the Erevan and Karabakh Khanates, to Imperial Russia. This period is known as Russian Armenia. While Western Armenia still remained under Ottoman rule, the Armenians were granted considerable autonomy within their own enclaves and lived in relative harmony with other groups in the empire, including the ruling Turks. However, as Christians under a strict Muslim social structure, Armenians faced pervasive discrimination. In response to 1894 Sassan Rebellion, Sultan Abdul Hamid II organized state-sponsored massacres against the Armenians between 1894 and 1896, resulting in an estimated death toll of 80,000 to 300,000 people. The Hamidian massacres, as they came to be known, gave Hamid international infamy as the Red Sultan, or Bloody Sultan. During the 1890s, the Armenian Revolutionary Federation, commonly known as Dashnik Sutun, became active within the Ottoman Empire with the aim of unifying the various small groups in the empire that were advocating for reform and defending Armenian villages from massacres that were widespread in some of the Armenian populated areas of the empire. Dashnik Sutun members also formed Armenian Fedai groups that defended Armenian civilians through armed resistance. The Dashnaks also worked for the wider goal of creating a free, independent and unified Armenia although they sometimes set aside this goal in favor of a more realistic approach, such as advocating autonomy. The Ottoman Empire began to collapse, and in 1908, the Young Turk Revolution overthrew the government of Sultan Hamid. In April 1909, 
the Adana massacre occurred in the Adana Vilayet of the Ottoman Empire resulting in the deaths of as many as 20,000-30,000 Armenians. The Armenians living in the empire hoped that the Committee of Union and Progress would change their second-class status. The Armenian Reform Package, 1914, was presented as a solution by appointing an inspector general over Armenian issues. World War I and the Armenian Genocide the outbreak of World War I led to confrontation between the Ottoman Empire and the Russian Empire in the Caucasus and Persian campaigns. The new government in Istanbul began to look on the Armenians with distrust and suspicion because the Imperial Russian Army contained a contingent of Armenian volunteers. On 24 April 1915, Armenian intellectuals were arrested by Ottoman authorities and, with the Tessar Law, the 29th of May 1915, eventually a large proportion of Armenians living in Anatolia perished in what has become known as the Armenian Genocide. The genocide was implemented in two phases. The wholesale killing of the able-bodied male population through massacre and subjection of army conscripts to forced labor, followed by the deportation of women, children, the elderly and infirm on death marches leading to the Syrian desert. Driven forward by military escorts, the deportees were deprived of food and water and subjected to periodic robbery, rape, and massacre. There was local Armenian resistance in the region, developed against the activities of the Ottoman Empire. The events of 1915 to 1917 are regarded by Armenians and the vast majority of Western historians to have been state-sponsored mass killings, or genocide. Turkish authorities deny the genocide took place to this day. The Armenian Genocide is acknowledged to have been one of the first modern genocides. According to the research conducted by Arnold J. Toynbee, an estimated 600,000 Armenians died during deportation from 1915 to 1916. This figure, however, accounts for solely the first year of the genocide and does not take into account those who died or were killed after the report was compiled on 24 May 1916. The International Association of Genocide Scholars places the death toll at, more than a million. The total number of people killed has been most widely estimated at between 1 and 1.5 million. 93. Armenia and the Armenian diaspora have been campaigning for official recognition of the events as genocide for over 30 years. These events are traditionally commemorated yearly on 24 April, the Armenian Martyr Day, or the Day of the Armenian Genocide. First Republic of Armenia. Although the Russian Caucasus Army of Imperial Forces commanded by Nikolai Yudenik and Armenians in volunteer units and Armenian militia led by Andranik Ozanian and Tavmas Nazarbekian succeeded in gaining most of Western Armenia during World War I, their gains were lost with the Bolshevik Revolution of 1917. At the time, Russian controlled Eastern Armenia, Georgia, and Azerbaijan attempted to bond together in the Transcaucasian Democratic Federative Republic. This federation, however, lasted from only February to May 1918, when all three parties decided to dissolve it. As a result, the Dashnik Sutun government of Eastern Armenia declared its independence on 28 May as the First Republic of Armenia under the leadership of Aram Manukian. The First Republic's short-lived independence was fraught with war, territorial disputes, large-scale rebellions, and a mass influx of refugees from Western Armenia, bringing with them disease and starvation. The Entente powers sought to help the newly founded Armenian state through relief funds and other forms of support. At the end of the war, the victorious powers sought to divide up the Ottoman Empire. Signed between the Allied and Associated Powers and Ottoman Empire at Sevres on 10 August 1920, the Treaty of Sevres promised to maintain the existence of the Armenian Republic and to attach the former territories of Western Armenia to it. Because the new borders of Armenia were to be drawn by United States President Woodrow Wilson, Western Armenia was also referred to as, Wilsonian Armenia. In addition, just days prior, on 5 August 1920, Murin Demadian of the Armenian National Union, the de facto Armenian administration in Cilicia, declared the independence of Cilicia as an Armenian Autonomous Republic under French Protectorate. 96. There was even consideration of making Armenia a mandate under the protection of the United States. The treaty, however, was rejected by the Turkish national movement, and never came into effect. The movement used the treaty as the occasion to declare itself the rightful government of Turkey, replacing the monarchy based in Istanbul with a republic based in Ankara. In 1920, Turkish nationalist forces invaded the fledgling Armenian Republic from the east. Turkish forces under the command of Kazım Karabekir captured Armenian territories that Russia had annexed in the aftermath of the 1877-1878 Russo-Turkish War and occupied the old city of Alexandropol. Present-day Gumri, 
The violent conflict finally concluded with the Treaty of Alexandropoli on 2 December 1920. The treaty forced Armenia to disarm most of its military forces, cede all former Ottoman territory granted to it by the Treaty of Sevres, and to give up all the Wilsonian Armenia granted to it at the Sevres Treaty. Simultaneously, the Soviet 11th Army, under the command of Grigory Orjanikidze, invaded Armenia at Karavansarai, present-day Eavan, on 29 November. By 4 December, Orjanikidze's forces entered Yerevan and the short-lived Armenian Republic collapsed. After the fall of the Republic, the February Uprising soon took place in 1921, and led to the establishment of the Republic of Mountainous Armenia by Armenian forces under command of Garaj and Enjda on 26 April, which fought off both Soviet and Turkish intrusions in the Zangazur region of southern Armenia. After Soviet agreements to include the Sunak province in Armenia's borders, the rebellion ended and the Red Army took control of the region on 13 July. 1922 till World War II. Armenia was annexed by the Red Army and along with Georgia and Azerbaijan, was incorporated into the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics as part of the Transcaucasian SFSR, TSFSR, on 4 March 1922. With this annexation, the Treaty of Alexandropol was superseded by the Turkish-Soviet Treaty of Kars. In the agreement, Turkey allowed the Soviet Union to assume control over Ajara with the port city of Batumi in return for sovereignty over the cities of Kars, Ardahan, and Igdir, all of which were part of Russian Armenia. The TSFSR existed from 1922 to 1936, when it was divided up into three separate entities, Armenian SSR, Azerbaijan SSR, and Georgian SSR. Armenians enjoyed a period of relative stability within USSR in contrast to the turbulent final years of the Ottoman Empire. The situation was difficult for the Church, which struggled with secular policies of USSR. After the death of Vladimir Lenin, Joseph Stalin, the General Secretary of the Communist Party, gradually established himself as the dictator of the USSR. Stalin's reign was characterized by mass repressions, that cost millions of lives all over the USSR, citation needed. World War II, post-Stalinist period. Armenia was not the scene of any battles in World War II. An estimated 500,000 Armenians, nearly a third of the population, served in the Red Army during the war, and 175,000 died. It is claimed, by whom? That the Freedom Index in the region had seen an improvement after the death of Joseph Stalin in 1953 and the emergence of Nikita Khrushchev as the new General Secretary of the CPSU. Soon, life in Armenia's SSR began to see rapid improvement. The Church, which was limited during the Secretaryship of Stalin, was revived when Catholicos Vazganai assumed the duties of his office in 1955. In 1967, a memorial to the victims of the Armenian Genocide was built at the Sipsernakabird Hill above the Harazdan Gorge in Yerevan. This occurred after mass demonstrations took place on the tragic event's 50th anniversary in 1965. Gorbachev Era During the Gorbachev era of the 1980s, with the reforms of Glasnost and Perestroika, Armenians began to demand better environmental care for their country, opposing the pollution that Soviet-built factories brought. Tensions also developed between Soviet Azerbaijan and its autonomous district of Nagorno-Karabakh, a majority Armenian region. About 484,000 Armenians lived in Azerbaijan in 1970. The Armenians of Karabakh demanded unification with Soviet Armenia. Peaceful protests in Armenia supporting the Karabakh Armenians were met with anti-Armenian pogroms in Azerbaijan, such as the one in Sumgate, which was followed by anti-Azerbaijani violence in Armenia. Compounding Armenia's problems was a devastating earthquake in 1988 with a moment magnitude of 7.2. Gorbachev's inability to alleviate any of Armenia's problems created disillusionment among the Armenians and fed a growing hunger for independence. In May 1990, the new Armenian army, NA, was established, serving as a defense force separate from the Soviet Red Army. Clashes soon broke out between the NA and Soviet Internal Security Forces MVD, troops based in Yerevan when Armenians decided to commemorate the establishment of the 1918 First Republic of Armenia. The violence resulted in the deaths of five Armenians killed in a shootout with the MVD at the railway station. Witnesses there claimed that the MVD used excessive force and that they had instigated the fighting. Further firefights between Armenian militiamen and Soviet troops occurred in Sovetishan, near the capital and resulted in the deaths of over 26 people, mostly Armenians. The pogrom of Armenians in Baku in January 1990 forced almost all of the 200,000 Armenians in the Azerbaijani capital Baku to flee to Armenia. 
On 23 August 1990, Armenia declared its sovereignty on its territory. On 17 March 1991, Armenia, along with the Baltic states, Georgia and Moldova, boycotted a nationwide referendum in which 78% of all voters voted for the retention of the Soviet Union in a reformed form. Restoration of Independence On 21 September 1991, Armenia officially declared its statehood after the failed August coup in Moscow, RSFSR. Levon Ter Petrosian was popularly elected the first president of the newly independent Republic of Armenia on 16 October 1991. He had risen to prominence by leading the Karabakh movement for the unification of the Armenian-populated Nagorno-Karabakh. On 26 December 1991, the Soviet Union ceased to exist and Armenia's independence was recognized. Ter Petrosian led Armenia alongside Defense Minister Vazgan Sarkisyan through the first Nagorno-Karabakh war with neighboring Azerbaijan. The initial post-Soviet years were marred by economic difficulties, which had their roots early in the Karabakh conflict when the Azerbaijani Popular Front managed to pressure the Azerbaijan SSR to instigate a railway and air blockade against Armenia. This move effectively debilitated Armenia's economy as 85% of its cargo and goods arrived through rail traffic. In 1993, Turkey joined the blockade against Armenia in support of Azerbaijan. Leader Nikol Pashinyan is the new prime minister. His predecessor Serge Sarkisyan resigned two weeks earlier following widespread anti-government demonstrations. On 27 September 2020, a full-scale war erupted due to the unresolved Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. Both the armed forces of Armenia and Azerbaijan reported military and civilian casualties. The Nagorno-Karabakh ceasefire agreement to end the six-week war between Armenia and Azerbaijan was seen by many as Armenia's defeat and capitulation. The year-long march of dignity protests forced early elections. On 20 June 2021, Pashinyan's civil contract party won an early parliamentary election. Acting Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan was officially appointed to the post of Prime Minister by Armenia's President Armin Sarkeesian. In January 2022, Armenian President Armin Sarkeesian resigned from office, stating that the constitution no longer gives the president sufficient powers or influence. On 3 March 2022, Vahan Kacharyan was elected as the fifth president of Armenia in the second round of parliamentary vote. The next month yet more protests broke out. 2023 Azerbaijani Offensive in Nagorno-Karabakh Between 19 and 20 September 2023, Azerbaijan launched a large-scale military offensive against the self-declared breakaway state of Artsakh, a move seen by the European Parliament as a violation of the 2020 ceasefire. Agreement. The offensive took place in the disputed region of Nagorno-Karabakh, which is internationally recognized as part of Azerbaijan, but populated by Armenians. The attacks occurred in the midst of an escalating crisis caused by Azerbaijan blockading Artsakh, which has resulted in significant scarcities of essential supplies such as food, medicine, and other goods in the affected region. One day after the offensive started, on 20 September, a ceasefire agreement was reached at the mediation of the Russian Peacekeeping Command in Nagorno-Karabakh. Azerbaijan held a meeting with representatives of the Nagorno-Karabakh Armenians on 21 September in Yevlok, to be followed by another meeting in October. Ceasefire violations by Azerbaijan were nonetheless reported by both Artsakhi residents and officials. Human rights organizations and experts in genocide prevention issued multiple alerts, stating that the region's Armenian population was at risk or actively being subjected to ethnic cleansing and genocide. Luis Moreno Ocampo a former prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, warned that another Armenian genocide could take place, and attributed the inaction of the international community to encouraging Azerbaijan that it would face no serious consequences. Thank you for listening friends. Keep support.